Welcome back and thanks for watching part one where we went over the appointments for a traditional altar. And today we're going to continue that with the traditional vessels that are used in the traditional rites and sacraments of the church. So we'll begin, of course, with the sacred chalice. The chalice is the most important sacred vessel that we have in the Catholic Church. It holds the precious blood and it's often the most ornate vessel we have in the church the chalice is set up with a purificator. A purificator is always made of linen. And in the previous video, I explained why linen is so important. Um, there's a cross usually sewn into the center of that. And on top of that is placed the paten. And the paten is a dish where the sacred host is placed. And during a low mass and then even more ceremonially in a solemn high mass, the paten is hidden. Why is that? Well, the paten represents the home of Christ. In a way, it represents uh, the, the people of Israel, the Jewish people. And since his own received him not, as St. John says in his gospel, the paten is hidden away by the subdeacon. And the, there's a lot of mystery in this, and we'll talk about it in another lesson. But the subdeacon represents ancient Israel, and the deacon represents the Gentiles, and the priest represents Christ. And so the subdeacon blinds himself during the consecration. He literally takes a veil. He puts the paten inside of it and with that veils his eyes uh, during the consecration. Uh, this is a very dramatic element in the Roman rite. And mystically, it signifies uh, the ancient Israelites being blind to the mystery and the coming of Jesus Christ and sort of taking away his homeland, his his landing pad here on earth, ancient Israel, hiding it and then blinding themselves. That's what's going on there in the mass with the subdeacon. On top of that, uh, you see the pall and it's square, it's stiff, it's linen, sometimes decorated on top. Uh, it goes on top of that and it's used during the mass to cover the chalice. There's a practical purpose for this. There are often bugs and flies uh, in churches. In the Eastern Rites, they have these fans that they are with bells on them sometimes that are, they're constantly jingling. That's to keep flies away from the priest. So he wants to touch it himself or get on to the sacred species. But in the Roman Rite, we have this pall, and it goes on top of the chalice and it protects the wine, but more importantly, after the consecration, it protects the precious blood. And that one side that goes down on the chalice is the holy side. It's often the one that's not decorated. The top part's decorated. But the side that goes closest to the precious blood, that's the holy side. Now, placed over all of this is a veil. And these veils match the liturgical colors of the year. And they're usually folded. So it looks like, a, oh, I'm going to test my geometry, a trapezoid. And then on top of that is a burse, which is etymologically related to purse. And it's a, a little folding. It folds open just like a purse. It's called a burse though, not a merce, like a man purse. This is a burse. And again, you can, you can put a, um, a corporal in there. And the corporal is linen and it folds in such a way inward. So if there's any particles of the precious body of Christ, they fold inward and don't fall out on the altar or fall out on the ground or fall out on your shoes or or whatever. So <clears throat> the burst holds the corporal. And then you'll also see a missile in a missile stand. And the, the missile has everything that the priest needs during mass. And the stands can be simple. They can be made out of wood. Often they're very ornate. They can be gold, silver, jeweled, um, just to show respect to to the missile and to the mass and to the altar. Um, the missile itself doesn't properly belong on the altar. So this is why when they sense the altar with incense, they remove the, the, sac the uh, missile and the stand. Uh, one thing I didn't already mention because it's obvious, but it probably needs to be said, and that is the chalice should be gold and silver. Traditionally, even if the chalice was silver, the interior was always gold. 
we need to offer our best. And you can say, well, what if we're poor and we don't have it? If you, you don't, if you're poor, you don't have it. God understands. But if you're not poor, if you're wealthy, if we have, you know, bass boats and five bedroom houses and new cars and all that, we need to make sure that we give our best to the holy sacrifice. And so chalices should be gold and silver, preferably gold, the best we have, and jeweled. It was often a, a custom in the old days where widows, when they died, they would leave their wedding ring or any jewelry that their husband gave them. They'd either share it with their with their um, descendants, but some of it would be used to beatify the churches, sometimes incorporate those stones into the chalice to bring honor to the precious blood of Jesus. And then you'll also see the cruets. I mentioned those in the altar video. One is for wine, one is for water, and the server is to hand those to the priest with the handles out so that the priest gets the handles. And then also there's the sanctus spell, which should be consecrated. It's a special bell. Sometimes it's one bell, sometimes it's two bells, three bells, four bells. Um, it, it's there to, uh, to punctuate and add elegance to the holy sacrifice of the Mass. A couple other items that you'll see. One is the monstrance. This is used in benediction of the Blessed Sacrament. It has a stand. It comes up. It has beautiful golden rays of light coming out. There's a little window, and in that window, on a little thing called a luna, which looks like a moon, the host, the precious body of Jesus, is placed there for our adoration and worship. And it's placed on a stand that elevates the monstrance, and that stand is called a tabor, named after the Mount Tabor, where Jesus Christ our Lord was transfigured. And so along the way, someone said, well, let's call this special stand that holds the monstrance up a tabor, because in a way, the Eucharist is Christ transfigured before us. He's in dazzling white, as we read in his transfiguration in that white host, in the accidents of the white host. So that's called a Mount Tabor. They're often also made of gold or something precious, ornate, and they hold up the monstrance so that we can worship our Eucharistic Lord. So those are the vessels of the traditional Roman rite that you'll see on the altar and in the appointments. And if you didn't see the previous video on how an altar is set up in the traditional Roman rite, I'd encourage you to go back, watch that part one. Thanks for being a member of the new St. Thomas Institute, and I look forward to talking more about the history of the Roman Rite and the traditional Latin Mass. Sovereign.